Hi, welcome to How to Repair. I went down a friend's house over Christmas who was complaining that his tumble dryer was taking twice as long as normal to dry the clothes. And after doing an inspection, I could not believe how close they were to actually having a fire hazard. And this was just a simple fault. What had happened was something had fallen down in the vent duct and actually blocked the filter from going down correctly. This then, over the course of a couple of months, built up a huge amount of fluff in the ducting tube. And because of the restriction in the airflow, this then started venting dust into the inside of the machine, which you will, sh which you will see shortly. Uh, but when testing the machine, I also found out that when turning the machine on, you've got two heat settings, a high and a low heat setting. And we should be drawing about 9 amp, but we're only drawing 5.8 amp. And when I press the high or the low button, the ampage doesn't change. So I suspect we also have a problem with the heating system, and we'll need to actually do an inspection on that. But the th reason I'm making this video is to emphasize that maintenance must be done on all dryers at least once every four or five years, depending on the amount of usage. Because when you see what's in this machine, you will understand why you need to do the maintenance. Okay, the first thing we need to do is take the lid off. But I can't emphasize enough, the more maintenance you do on a machine, the less, less electricity you will be using. So two screws, take the lid off, tap it backwards. This will vary from, uh, this will vary from appliance to appliance, but you can see the fluff buildup. I'm not going to clear this yet. I'm going to take the side panels off to give you a clear view. Now, on this machine, we need to undo the screws along the side on both panels to remove the side panel so we can actually clear all this debris and fluff that has built up in the machine. OK, we've got the screws along the side, and I'll just fast forward not to bore you. Okay, panel just comes off at the back. Now we've done all the screws, slides over, and then you can release the panel. Exactly the same on this side, except the facial panel needs to come off to release a single screw on this side. So there's a couple of clips if I can find them amongst all this fluff. And hidden in here is the screw. OK, I've got a little box here. I'm just going to keep this in because maybe the owner could knit a jumper out of this lot. I mean, you can understand what I'm saying with a potential fire hazard. This is very combustible. And we will go through the whole system. Firstly, just removing all the fluff. And it's everywhere. I will actually save this for my friend because he won't believe it. OK, we've pulled out most of the majority, but we need to vacuum all this up now. And it's going to take me a good half hour or so to go through the whole machine. But I will fast forward to the point where we take the whole ducting unit out so we can inspect that. And then we'll test the element. It's also very important to note the dust that builds up on the motor system can cause the motor to overheat. So it's very important to spend your time with a soft brush and make sure you get all the dust out uh, inside the windings here. This is the vent tube and I can see it's really blocked. Uh, on these models of machines, it's just got a couple of pins uh, one screw and a couple of pins, and this will come off. It normally twists, and that comes away. And then you are able to remove <laughs> the tube. And if I just push this out, get my point? That's what came out. Uh, if a tumble dryer can't vent the hot air, it's only going to steam the clothes. This is why it's so important to keep your machine <coughs> in good condition. 
Okay, it's not only what you can see, you need to work out the ducting system and actually clean this up. And the plastic surfaces of the ducting system really want to be as sparkly as possible, in other words, clean as possible, because the less friction it has, the less likely is it is to stick to all the pipes. So we'll take the filter out first, and then we'll undo the screws inside the door here. You may need help supporting the actual panel, but I've done this a few times. And there are some supports on the sides, which was a modification by the Hotpoint and Indesect company years ago. should come away and we just need to release the door lock okay I just need to remove the wiring off here and also remove the clip it's just a cable tie now I can take the ducting system off but it does support the drum so do be careful and here we have the ducting system. There is also a thermostat attached to the rear of the ducting and you need to take the two wires off this. We have a load of supports and they look all in good condition. Okay we need to clean out this ducting system so I'm just going to tip this on the floor and see what we find. Five pence, a couple of rocks, a bead. You'll be amazed what's in here, but really you've got to clean the whole of this up immaculately. Do spend your time cleaning up and going through absolutely everything to make it immaculate. Okay, we've managed to get the ducting system completely and utterly clean now. We've done up all around the felt pads and also on the ducting inside here. We managed to retrieve about £1.40 out of the machine, but don't tell my mate, otherwise he'll want the money back. And also, you can see the amount of fluff that came out of the ducting. And this is what was holding back the filter from going into place. And it just built up and built up because of this. Okay, I'm quickly going to reassemble the machine. Uh, I might be doing some of this off camera, but there are lots of tutorials at the website with regards to these hot point intercept machines and many other makes as well, Hoover Candy, Vico, and so on. The principle of this video is all the same throughout. Uh, the disassembly of the machines will vary from machine to machine. So if you go to the YouTube channel link above or in the description below, there will be a link that will take you through to the tumble dryer section where you will find a more appropriate video for your machine. So we'll just quickly assemble all this. Okay, inserted the electrics and now we've cleaned up the panel on the inside. Make sure you go around all the edges and everything. Really do clean up the machine completely and we'll just assemble this. Okay, we're ready to insert the vent tube and if I bring this up to the camera for you and you can see down it, this is what I mean about making sure it's absolutely immaculate and that basically goes through and as you can see the whole machine now is like new and then we just need to insert the side panel and the back clip. Do note when actually fitting the side panel back onto the machine, there's a couple of clips at the bottom here and it slides onto it. Okay, I fixed the side panel back on and also put the strengthening supports in and the screw that's hidden here. And now we're able to fix the electrics back on. And there's some clips, these were the ones you need to uh, release. You'll notice that I've cleaned everything up because fluff does attract more fluff. So I've just all assembled all this, as I said, to give it a bit more rigidity. And we'll just get the panel on. Now we're able to quickly test the heating system. Now this heater doesn't actually uh, hang on to the machine it comes away with the back panel so I'm undoing this cable tie first press the button down and release it and then we'll pull this through and test the element 
Okay, to gain access to the element, you need to take the back cover off. Now, I've done many videos on repairing these in the past, and as you will see, what I want to also check is the back bearing. Can you see that this is moving up and down when I move the drum? This means that the bearing is worn. So when I order a new heater for this machine, if the heater is faulty, I will replace the bearing as well. Take off the retention bar, two screws, and that can just lift above. Then you have the screws that go all the way around the heater. You may need to use a flat blade screwdriver because there is a seal and these seals can get rather stuck. And it was. Then that is able to be pulled away and you can thread the electrics through. And you can see here there is still quite a bit of fluff built up on the heater unit and this is what could cause the fire because this gets up to three, 400 degrees while the air is flowing through and there's two thermostats on the bottom. There are other videos on the website to show you how to test heating elements and when the new heating element comes, I will do a video on that as well. But I'm quickly going to remove this and test it for you. There are two screws that hold the heating element in place. Carefully remove these and keep them safe because they are totally different to any screw that's on the dryer at all. And as you can see, the fluffers I was on about, so I'm quickly going to clean this up before testing it. Okay, first we've got two thermostats. So we've got two orange wires and two blue wires, or a double wire. So I'm just going to take one terminal off each. And we will quickly with the multimeter, check the two thermostats. Now it, it was heating, so the thermostats will be good, uh, but it wasn't heating on high heat. Continuity on that one, continuity on that one. Now we're able to test the heating element. Now, as I said, there are two sides to the heating element. And if you can see here in the middle, there's a linked up bar going across with a blue wire on the one end, orange in the middle and brown on the other end. So we know the middle wire is our common or neutral and we need to test across these two fields. This one is open circuit, meaning it's not good and this one should be the good one. And we have 46, sorry, my fingers came off. We have 46 ohms resistance and we'll be able to work out the wattage of the element with Ohm's law, uh, which you can see in other videos. But we know this element is faulty and needs replacing. And as I said, we need to replace the back bearing, which I'll show you quickly now. It is very important when doing these jobs that you do them right, because you'll get many years more use out of the machine. I, this bearing, I can tell you now by the movement that you saw just now, is the pear shape or the roundness of the bearing holder or the shaft is in very bad condition. And what happens with these is they cut through. And if you look here, the outer cover, and if I quickly remove the bearing now, we have caught this in perfect timing before it actually did damage to the shaft. And if I just remove the bearing itself, and bring this up to the camera for you, you can see that the bearing has created an oval shape hole instead of round. That means eventually the shaft would have cut through the bearing and cut into the steel, damaging the shaft. So the next video I'll do for you is replacing the heating element and also the bearing. Okay, I've reassembled the machine and the machines are working perfectly apart from it needs a new heating element and a new pear-shaped bearing. This machine will now go on for many, many more years. And not only will it go on for more years, it will also be drying efficiently. This means that you're going to be using a lot less electricity. And the other thing is, if you do need any parts for your appliance, enter your full model number 
off the identification plate, which is normally found on the ID label inside the door or on the back of the machine. Enter that into the website and you'll find the parts that you need for your dryer. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. I hope it helped you. Remember to subscribe to the channel as that really helps us. And if we really did help you to solve the problem, remember you can always click on the Bipolar Beer page. Thanks again for watching.